is good TPA podcast. It's your boy Big Holla. We are back, and it's, we got the boy hey, Tiana here, man. Hey, Auntie, Mama, I'm on a beanbag this time. We comfy. We real comfy. <laughs> That's great. We real comfy. So we got a special guest. Go oh, ahead, and introduce three. yourself. Special um, guest. Most will call me Mr. R O S C O E. Mr. Shardy put it on me. Okay. Um, most of my friends call me Sco. So, you know, Sco Dash in the building. So if you had to pick between mothers and aunties, which one are you going with and why? That's tough. So that's a real question. I'm, right I'm gonna give you the benefits of both, though. Thank you, because yeah, I need. Let's run do down I get the like, I just, I'm gonna let you know right now before we even get into this. I need a certain amount of like I can pick both. Okay, I'm, a, I'm gonna pick both. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, with the moms, you're gonna have a full pantry of snacks. Facts. Yeah, like, when the kids go to sleep, you know it's up. That's true. You know? But Auntie got that money. She got yeah, the she money. She does have <laughs> bread, but she don't like kids like that. Mm. So if but you got, got kids, I got three. So she got. I need somebody that's gonna be able to. At least, but see, and, and you know the mom, she got a limited time window. She gonna make sure you get optimized. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? But, but but you got a small window of time to operate within. You see oh, what yeah, I'm saying? You you sure. a Very mom small window. Small. I don't know if that's for me. See see, oh, wow. auntie, you gonna have to hit her with the. So what you about to get into? A couple times. Facts. Valid. That's valid. Facts. So bro, I gotta ask the moment when you realize I did this shit. Because you, mm. first of all, let me go ahead and just give you your flowers now, brother. <laughs> I appreciate it. Mr. All the Way Turned Up, you don't, I don't think you understand how many college parties, high That's school parties, valid. shit, sporting events, no, for sure. you literally turn up that, hey. to this day. That's valid. <laughs> shit. So. I remember he did, you did a party at uh, Skate Along. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, that was crazy. You know what's wild is that I used to go there, so I'm yeah. like, I'm like, yo, this is crazy. And yeah. I had a show like that at Wild Bills too one time. Oh like, my all the god! Was from school was in the crowd. I was like, yo, this is, fun. and I had no idea. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I knew obviously, but I think that might have been my aha moment yeah. because I actually had the same support. And and this comes from a kid that was selling CDs at school and shit. I was sitting yeah. there printing up on a on a desktop computer 300 CDs a night yeah. to go to the school the next day, making my own cover art and shit like that. So to get to the level of people actually coming out to see you and those same people that was buying your CD, I think that was the moment for me. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. So like, how does it feel to really see your success that you've had, bro? Because you had a lot of it. Thank you. Like a bunch of success. Yeah. Like you got timeless hits. Valid. Like that, that will be timeless. in rotation like in the, the hip hop a museum, no, like, literally, <laughs> and you don't just have one. No, you don't sure. have two. No, sure. You don't have three. No, sure. <laughs> you got a lot of them. No, like there sure. was a point in time, bro. I don't think there was a song that was like a hit mm -hmm. that didn't have you on it. That's valid. Yeah. There was literally like a run. We was talking about this on the pod a few, a few months ago. Talk I had to stand up for my boy. You man. did. I appreciate yeah. that. I saw that. I appreciate that. You, hey, he been the same he since. Hey, I fuck with my boy for sure. So, so how does it feel, bro? Just knowing that you really hit that, that the pinnacle, honestly. Yeah. What is that? What does that feel like? Honestly, man, I just enjoy creating, and it don't really matter what I'm creating. I'm learning that now at the age I am now, and um, you know, I've always been that way since I was a kid. So I think just being able to have a hand or a footprint in whatever's going on and whatever's to be, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I think that's the the plus for me. Yeah. That's what's up though. And like when you talk, which is crazy part, because I have to tell you the story. When I first started YouTube, bruh, <laughs> you was hooping at LA LA Fitness Buford, <laughs> right? But I didn't know that at the time. So when he hit me up, he was like, Yeah, he wanna he wanna work, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's what's up. I was messing with some people, right? And it was like Yo, Roscoe at uh, LA Fitness. Yeah, we should try to use him. Yeah, but yeah, it was crazy. I was like, nah, I don't think we should do that. So it's like a full circle, like this moment, this moment that is very like, full circle. yeah. Tell the other part too about how I cooked the ass up. On the oh, yeah. <laughs> I forget that. Part. I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> Hooping with you is like. I ain't gonna lie, it's an experience, bro. <laughs> you gonna shoot that bitch regardless. <laughs> okay, regardless. And then talk shit, bro. The last time we hooped, you was about to fight your partner. Oh, yeah. Your homeboy, yeah, your nah, best for sure. nah, for sure. Oh, it be like, like that, bro. bro. But I'm on the like record, that. on the record though, I do fight my homeboys. Like it's a couple of my homeboys. And they some of my best friends. Like it's gotten to that point. But I feel like, you know, sometimes you have to break that barrier. And sometimes you gotta be forced to break that barrier. Sometimes, yeah. you know what I mean? But once you break it, bro, the, the bond is just like. It's inseparable. It's so, so you think relationship, men's relationships are better if they fight? I think some of them are. Some of them mm. don't need to be that way. But I think that really what it is, man, is that 
we all have a mask that we yeah. put on every day. You know what yeah. I mean? And for men specifically, like I feel like we don't really have a safe place to really be ourselves. So yeah. a lot of that pent up aggression or like whatever it is that you want to call it, it could just be whatever. A lot of that shit comes out in other ways, whether it be mm. in our relationships with our girls, whether it be in a relationship with our parents even, or yeah. our peers, whoever. You know what I'm saying? So for me, what I'm really saying is, is that you need those people. You're not being a good friend if you don't push somebody to be their truest self, oh, yeah, their yeah. fullest self. And I'm that guy. I'm, I'm just like that. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> Bro, I, that night was so fun. It was funny, but I was like, hold on. We talked this about it immediately serious. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> this shit's serious. He's like, let's go outside right now. Yeah, He's no, like, dude, sure. you don't want to do this. shit's crazy. I don't, I, I don't think I could fight my friends, though. Because, like, I don't. I, I don't want to fight somebody unless I'm trying to go all the way. Mm -hmm. Like, but see, so... sometimes, you, sometimes, and, and, and I ain't gonna lie, sometimes it'll be one of your home with it, so you can't always do that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, like, it, either way it goes, to me, I'm having your back by letting you know this. Yeah. I'm gonna help you up. Like, sometimes we gotta bomb a hug you and everything when yeah. we get done. I don't ever wanna have to do that shit again, but I'm glad we got it out the way. Like, yeah. That's what's up, bro. So, I gotta ask, bro. The song Marvin Gaye Chardonnay. This is the question I gotta ask. Yeah. What were you in the studio with Kanye? Yeah, for sure. Come what time, the bro. hell is that like, bro? What is that experience, bro? Yeah, I gotta, it's hard, I gotta bro. ask. Like, I ain't gonna lie, man. It kind of like I think this is my first um, time really learning that I was a songwriter. I think like yeah. in, in truest form, you know what I mean? Like I've gotten a session and helped. I helped out with stuff and shit like that before, but actually being recognized as somebody to contribute to something so massive you know what yeah. i mean like and being called in to do that i thought was like my real oh shit moment and i got yeah. to meet jay-z and i think either in that trip or the trip after that when i came back uh, meeting him was the same thing it was like damn i grew up watching y'all you know what i mean so mm -hmm. to be welcomed in for me to open the door and be like oh shit my bad and they be like no nah, nigga come in like yeah. I, I was like oh you know what i mean and i come around the corner and jay's sitting there he's like what's up it's like oh shit like yeah. i'm here you know what i mean and he asking me like okay what you got for what we're doing in front of it you know what i mean so yeah. all of these moments are moments that are like validating for me that people can never take away no matter what they yeah. sure say do whether i'm a lift driver this week or i don't got the uh hottest whatever whatever from where i'm from or whatever the case may be the next week like to me these are the things that are stamped no matter what yeah. i can walk in a room they're gonna see me and be like yo let's go what up and then uh, you know what i mean like that's that's the moment for me yeah. going to their houses and whatever the case may be growing up in a place where like a lot of people do music going to the people who are like elite at music mm -hmm. what was that difference in having the confidence in a room when you're with people who are like all right I you my homie, we mm -hmm. trying to do music to like, they really do it. What was that like? <clears throat> um, honestly, I think it's the same as anything else as I'm learning in my older years. I'm 33 now, that's why I keep saying that. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I came into it when I was 18, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I got my first deal when I was 18, so that's a long time to me. I kind of grew up in music, you know what I mean, yeah. in the industry. So for me, man, <laughs> it's really about keeping the same routine, you know what I mean? So how you practice on the on the practice floor is how you gonna, how you gonna perform in game time, you know what I mean? So those same moments when I was pulling my homies, the Calios, the YTs, the, the people mm -hmm. who really started with me in that, in that regard, um, pushing them to do music in those moments instead of being in the streets or whatever the reason was why we were stuck in the studio, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it's the same thing that's gonna help me have that same amount of confidence and pulling that out of them as I do when I, with other people who are more higher up. Yeah. So for me, it's the same thing as now my thing is when I get in with an artist, I always like to have a conversation with them to find out where they are musically and in their personal life too. Like what you got going on, does your personal life influence your music, that type of stuff. And then I want to find that level that you haven't been to and I want to work on top of that level. I don't want to go below that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And keep pushing. That's how the Marvin Gaze and Chardonnays come out. That's how, you know what I mean, to the world and all that other stuff happens. That's what's up. So walk us through your creative process, bro, because I, I really sat and just listened to some of your music. I'm like, how did he come up with this? It just depends. Like, like I, is honestly, it just the it's moment? phases. Yeah, it's like phases. <laughs> like, it was a time when um, we would have a whole bunch of people in the studio. It was a time when we have a whole bunch of people in liquor in the studio. It was to the point where motherfuckers was throwing up and shit. Like, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me, but like, <laughs> it was bad though. You know what I'm saying? I go through phases, man. Sometimes you want to experience the party and it may not be for party music. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And the other times you're going to want to just be by yourself. And I got to set up like I do here. And this is where all my latest music and a lot of my other records have come from this too. You know what I'm saying? The same yeah. type of setup. So I think it's all about, for me, I'm an Aries. So it's about um, playing to my competition of mm -hmm. where I'm at. You know what I mean? Or adapting to the atmosphere that I'm in. And I'm always going to perform um, or try to compete in that in that element or in that realm or whatever. So for the Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay specifically, like that came from um, working on some writing sessions. I think I was writing for uh, Flo Rida. Uh, this is when T.I. had first got out um, after he did some time. I think Drake was on his second album or first album, I think. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It was like a few people that I was helping work on certain certain stuff with. 
Hold on. No, let him cook. 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 I know what you're saying. Let him cook. All right? Yeah. So, so we were just working on records. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so that um, Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay came out of that batch of records. And I think maybe like a year, bro, went by and that shit just sat on my computer. Just like a whole bunch of other records that I have. I got in the room with Kanye. He played me... Um, no Church in a Wild, Motion Picture, and like one other record, I can't remember, I've watched The Throne. And then he handed me the ox. And I'm looking at him like, bro, what the fuck am I supposed to play after that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I started going for my most abstract records. And with that beat being what it is, as soon as he heard, wait, 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 he was like, give me this. No, and give him a hard drive. Yeah. I went back to the crib. We did our thing there. For, I, was, I think I was there for like three days or something like that. I went back home. Within two weeks, um, it came out and debuted against Marvin's Room. And it was a Big Sean record with Kanye. That's... Elite. <laughs> Elite. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest song that you have writing credits on? Damn. That's to hard. you. To you. To you. That's the biggest hard. song to you. Uh, I got to give you more than one. I would have to say No Hands for sure. I was going to okay. say No Hands. I was going to say No Hands. Yeah. No to. Hands is. Um, but just because of what it is, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I also have records like Lotus Flower Bomb. Oh, let him cook, let him cook, let him cook. We're going to get there. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, What else do I have? That's oh, man. Big. Um, <laughs> I got some other records, too. Like it, the, the, To me, those are probably the two, two and, the, and the To The World record mm -hmm. um, that I got with Kanye and R. Kelly that was on Cruel Summer. I did that, too. So. Bro. <laughs> okay. So... Lotus Flower Bomb. Yeah. Let's get yeah, into it. I just it. talked about this today at the studio. <laughs> Let's oh get into it. What happened? Why? Why didn't you get? You see, proper, you, see it, you see how it's, you see how that whole situation just like. Because <laughs> I saw a podcast and he did it to someone else too. Yeah. Now, Wale is my dog. We done made up since then, right? Yeah. I'm gonna keep it a band, and I'm sure that he won't mind me saying this because I'm gonna be respectful. Um. We had, me and him were like super, super, super tight. It's still my dog, right? We all go through stuff, like I said. But this was, we were like inseparable at this time. Mm -hmm. And he had some stuff that was going on with his label and stuff. I was signed to Interscope. He was signed to Interscope when we did No Hands, yeah. to my knowledge. Um, and then shortly after that, Interscope ended up, him and Interscope ended up falling out. He wasn't no Interscope no more. I don't know if they mm -hmm. released. I don't know what happened. Um, so... Shortly after that, I wanted to, you know, be in my dog and shit like that, us growing our relationship and stuff like that. I took some trips to D.C., went to his birthday party, different stuff like that. We started to just grow our relationship and shit. And I was like, damn, man, I really want to help him out and shit like that. You know what I mean? So let's create. I love to create anyway. I, mm -hmm. I would love to do some shit for him. I think he's an amazing uh, artist, a poet, a wordsmith, whatever you want to call it. You know yeah. what I mean? So um, we got in. And I told him, I remember telling him, because at this time, when you know when you don't have a label, you don't have a budget, you got to come out of pocket for this stuff. So yeah, I yeah. used my budget. I'm like, just come to my studio, bro. It's cool. Um, we made a few records with a few uh, dope people, Sydney Renee, uh, Sam Cloud Eater, um, a few different people that were like, that I have to mention because I don't know if nobody else will mention them, right? So um, we did a few records or whatever. We got to Lotus Flower Bomb, pulled in my dog, Jaron Howard, who made the beat. And um, we cut the record or whatever. Uh, a few weeks later, I went on promo tour, and I remember being in D.C. It's so ironic that I would just happen to be there when this happened. And I'm doing a radio interview, and the chick is like, she, I guess she's doing a pre-recorded show or something like that. Yeah. So it's kind of like playing as we're doing it or whatever. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom real fast. In the segment, bro, as I'm sitting in the studio, in the room, in the radio room, it's like, uh, Wale's new record, Lotus Flower Bomb with Miguel. It come on. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> like... But it's it's crazy to me because we were so like this, so for me to not hear, and I'm I'm part of the, I ain't gonna say I'm part of the reason, but we had a very intense discussion, uh, deep discussion too, before he even signed his new deal that he did yeah. with Ross, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, And I kind of told him, I'm like, bro, this is a great opportunity for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. when one door closes, another door opens, to me, you're gonna stand out like a sore thumb, and being as talented as you are, it's an amazing situation for you to be on that roster, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Sure. So we did a few other records and stuff like that, that's what prompted me to just get in and help give him that push he needed to get through the hump and overcome the other emotional distress that would come with closing the door on a situation that kind of gave your identity in a sense, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or, or supported it, I should say. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, nonetheless, um, I think there was a complex interview that came out shortly after this. I went straight to Twitter. This is my fault with, with yeah. going to Twitter with that shit, but I yeah. couldn't get him on the phone. So it just made, I knew where I could find him at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So boom, I reached a little bit. Cool, I'll take that. There was a complex interview that came out and they did a thing with Miguel 
And Miguel was like, uh, I don't know if this was like during the situation or before. I don't know when. The, I just saw it during this moment. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, and it was like, I don't even know who Roscoe is. Me and um, Wale got together and did this record with the Whoop. And in my mind, I'm thinking, bro, you weren't even there when we cut the record. Like, I got the original stems on my computer right yeah, now. Like, yeah. you're not on it. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to <laughs> Sam Cloud here. You were not on that record. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and the other thing that made me, I guess, feel a way was that I just met Miguel, like, maybe, like, three to four weeks before then at the ASCAP Awards. Yeah. yeah. And where I got the songwriting awards and shit that just that's on the wall and he came up to me and was like not even naming my biggest records which let me know that he really was a you know a fan of the pen at least oh or whatever. he said he yeah. was a fan no for real not then to be three like, weeks like, later yeah. said i don't know him it's crazy I, for real this serious and this is just from my perspective it could have happened however it happened i just this is how i got it yeah you know what i'm saying so for me to meet you shake your hand you're like oh we should get together your pen is dope i love your records you start naming records that ain't even the ones that everybody knows you know what yeah, i'm saying right. so for the, uh, a thing to come out and you dragging me through the mud like that knowing you weren't in the room and you only had about this much input on that record outside of singing it you know what i'm saying like the record was already done yeah it just made me feel a way about it and i think i gotta speak on this too because it kind of went hand in hand was the meek situation that kind of spun off of that right mm. so i think personally and again this is just from where i sit um i might have kind of overlooked or I don't know, it was unintentional, whatever it was. And it kind of made him feel away. So I think in that moment, he saw his opportunity to strike. And me being, like you said, having a whole bunch of records and shit going on at that time, I was yeah. on, my, on my high horse too. I was doing yeah. my thing, you know what I'm saying? So um, it turned into like, oh, you must have wrote the happy birthday song. So it turned into a whole little thing, knowing that I really did right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was just a thing, yeah. bro. But it's water under the bridge. Uh, I reached out multiple times to Meek. Um, I actually ran into Miguel. We had our little spat, and that's cool. And me and Wale recently had a discussion, too, at the, uh, damn, what was it? The Afropunk um, concert in Atlanta. So everything cool. That's what's up. See, that's the that's the one thing that's beautiful about that entire situation, though. Y'all are able to work things out. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like, like, we, like, we got one of the biggest songs in the last 20 years together. His, exactly. Bro, you, know what you mean? can arguably so, like, say... In history, bro, yeah. like you hear that, and it's never that deep. Like to me, you got a rule number one with me, man. Is always know your people. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I can't call you a friend or say you family to me or nothing like that. And I don't know how you are. Yeah. So with that, I got to give you the benefit of a doubt when it comes to certain things. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's how you reach the resolution by being sure. vulnerable, which yeah. is where most people <laughs> drop the ball at. So. Yeah, that's real though. Black man, be vulnerable. You know what I'm saying? It's okay, be bro. Man. So, it's okay. like, being it's from okay. Atlanta, well, maybe not Amaretta's Atlanta, but, you know. <laughs> hey, um... yo, it's funny that you say this, bro, because I swear, I was just in the studio. I forgot where I was at, and the song came on, and I looked at somebody, and they looked at me, and I was like... <laughs> And I'm from I'm from a little bit of everywhere. Like I grew up out here. I went to high school and all my I got my stripes out here. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm from like everywhere in Atlanta, literally. Yeah. So it's like, you know. So being from everybody else's Atlanta, right? <laughs> um <laughs> the north side of Atlanta never really gets its just due mm -hmm. when it comes to urban culture, mm -hmm. right? Um but on top of that, you don't get your credit for being one of the first ones out of here. When everybody thinks of it now, it's they go straight to the, the Migos, which you know what I'm saying? Shout yeah. out to them. Yeah. Rest in peace take off. Coming to yeah, rest in peace take, take off. Man. Yeah. yeah. So does that how how does that feel when you hear people like kind of like remove you from those conversations? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When I saw that episode, bro, the one I can't remember the dude now. I ain't even gotta get into it, but like, wow. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Yeah. Especially when there's things out there, and I don't mean that. You know, I'm a, you know how I am, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm super down to earth. I ain't, but for it to be pictures out there with people wearing mohawks, bro, <laughs> literally yeah. started the trend. Insane. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is another thing too, bro. And I just spoke on this before, so I'll say it again. Like it's always been a thing with us, bro. Like, and I don't understand why. Like, and I've, I've not only heard about it when I'm not around, but just experiencing it when I'm there. And it's not all of them. It wasn't yeah. all of them when they were all three with us. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. like, it's just always been a thing. And I never understood why, like us being from where we are and mm -hmm. having the, the like, 
even if it's outside of music, bro. Like, I be wanting to do other stuff that really counts. Like, it's a whole yeah. bunch of schools out here and kids that look up to us and shit. So, why do we only get together on Luda Day weekend? Why we only get together on, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why we don't have a Northside Day? Why we don't, and if we do, why the hell I ain't invited? Like, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I went to Central Gwinnett and, and shot in the open gyms. I went to the Bufords. I went to the Collins Hills. I went to the, you know what I'm saying? Rose Jordan Parks and all this. I know where all this shit See, is. See, and I you think that's where the so, divide comes yeah, that's in. That's exactly where Because, like, is, I went to know? Central too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I also went to Mountain View. Mm -hmm. So I, I seen the disconnect. Yeah. People forget how big Gwinnett is. Mm -hmm. Lawrenceville is three is zip big. codes. No. Literally. By itself. So like there's a certain segment of Lawrenceville, right. or I mean of Gwinnett, that's like, nah, y'all the Gwinnett that people be talking yeah, about. Nah, for so sure. they kind of like- But I think it's like that with it. everybody though. I think we just get in our own way a little bit because- because of that same stigma that we have of being overlooked and shit like that, yeah. like I think it makes us want to stand on business a little bit more. Maybe. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we just want to get that shit together. So, um, I think it's kind of a us against us thing, and I've tried to talk to them a few times. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's and it's been a time that really ruffled my feathers. I'm gonna say it because it's just like it really irritated the fuck out of me. We was playing in a celebrity football game uh, that when the Super Bowl was here. I forget what year it was. Yeah, but um, Puevo played in the game too, and. After the game, we ain't got to get into all the shit about the game, but after the game, I had brought my nephew back to uh, mm -hmm. get a jersey signed, but I had picked up a jersey that was like out there on the field already because he didn't have a jersey, obviously, yeah. right? Mine was all dirty and shit, so he wanted Quavo to sign a jersey, and when I went to go get Quavo to sign the jersey, he acted like he didn't want to sign it. My nephew was like five, bro. Yeah. So I'm like, bro, if you got an issue with me, that's cool, yeah. bro, but sign a fucking jersey before <laughs> yeah. you get out of pocket in here. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And his people had to be like, yo, just sign a jersey, bro. What's up? Like, yeah. So that's my thing. It's like, I don't know what the thing is, but it's... It ain't that, it, it's not on my radar. I was yeah. trying to figure out what the hell going on. You know what I mean? I would love to do something. I would, I've been like that. Yeah. So. But could you have imagined Amigos? Crazy. And Roscoe that would have been track? insane. Oh my God. Bro, <laughs> that would have been probably one of the biggest songs no, out of sure. this area for real. Yeah. That's like one of the. That would have been like the yeah. best party song, that I think. Oh my. See, if y'all, I just wish, I hate it's like that, bro. It's like that competitiveness mm -hmm. that goes too far when everybody could come up together. Like, I really think. I think it's one of them yeah. things where, like, you never really sat and talked with somebody mm -hmm. and you got people, like, yeah. in your you know, ear. Yeah. Amping up the competitiveness in your ear. Yeah. Like, you, you know, me, you... Uh, me and Skip went to school together. And okay. That's the yeah. homie. So, you know, he would come to my mom's crib, nigga. We sit down yeah. and play video games, play music and shit like that. It's my homie. You know what I yeah. mean? So, like, he he even would be like, damn, I don't know what the what the riff is about. Like yeah. it, it's uncomfortable for me at times because you know how we are, and then I'm over here doing this, that, and the third. Yeah. So I think I, honestly, I think not that that's the thing, mm -hmm. but I think all of that contributed to the ultimate divide of what could have been with it because they had a massive impact. Yeah. Just as, you know what it I could, mean? It so, could have been one of them. What would Drake say? Ask me if I want to listen to Ludacris. Right? <laughs> yeah, no cap. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Hey, that's funny you do that. I thought I was the only person that be doing shit like that. Hey, that's funny as fuck. <laughs> I, I, I probably like if you get to the bottom of most men's beef, there's a it's woman a one behind it. You know what? My bodyguard told me, bro. Uh, and he's also my homie, so I should probably shouldn't even call him that. But he was yeah. my bodyguard at the time. He told me that we had gotten a fight with some of their homeboys at Lifetime one time. Uh, and that was part of the reason. But I do remember getting in fights, but I don't remember fighting them niggas, though. Like, yeah. So I've never understood. It's so many like, of them. Like, it is, when though. It comes, but yeah. we, we did tag some ass here, though. We, did, <laughs> we got kicked out a few times. Like, yeah. Or shit like that. And it's all unnecessary stuff, right? Like, it's all yeah. shit. It's basketball. But it'd be that same target yeah. shit that she was talking about when you was in there. Like, it'd be that. Oh, like, yeah. oh, Roscoe in there. Let's go. Woo, woo, woo. And yeah. I hoop. So when y'all start doing too much, I'm like, all right, well, y'all doing too much now. And yeah. I'm going to bust y'all ass, but now y'all taking it a little. Yeah. And my homies ain't going to be on the same accord because I'm, I'm. Yeah, professional. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, to me, they like, they like, ain't nobody playing with you, bro, because this is how we eat. This is what we, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it is what it is. But I wish it could, I wish the, the situation could be different. I wish mm -hmm. that we could have done things together way back when we should have done them. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also, you know, I'm open to whatever, man. I ain't no, it's good with me. Yeah. Who was the one artist out of Atlanta that you wish you could have got a feature with, or you could have done a thousand? Oh my god! Or Boy. Future, I'll take that too. Future would be crazy. Future would be crazy. I got some shit for Future right now. Nope. Yeah. Why wouldn't that Metro? <laughs> hey, listen, I was coming out, man. Now that I think about it, that does not make sense. Why y'all don't have a song? I don't know, bro. Cause you did shit. Some with everybody at one point. So, damn. It'd what was like the fa that, what was your favorite song that you got to do? Like just the studio session, everything that it was just like, yo, I will never forget this moment. Was it the Kanye or was it No Hands or was it something else? 
I got a couple, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I got a few. Um, those two that you named are definitely top tier for sure. They're definitely at the, probably in the one or two spots. Um, me and Ye got a couple of different ones, so it's, you know, that's definitely up there, all of those. But I also liked other sessions that I was in or, and writing sessions and shit like that. Uh, working with, uh, let me try to give you some names, fuck. There's so many people, damn. Uh, David Guetta, I worked with David Guetta before. That was hard. I, um, I like other shit like that. Like the shit that, like I said, that's on top of where you, that's how I keep the timelessness going. Yeah. The emerging shit. You know what I'm saying? So them, the Floster Domuses. I did a shit, with, I did some shit, um, some shit with Juvenile before. That was hard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, just more, because I've always looked at No Hands like the like the newer, back that ass up. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Literally. So like, that's the, <laughs> yeah. so to get in with him was fine. And we did a song called Too Much Ass. That's hard. That's dope. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, this is tough. Man, so, okay, take us back to the moment, because shit, you was young as hell coming into this game. Mm-hmm. What were some of your challenges coming up? Basically, probably being the youngest in the room. Yeah, no, for sure. Every single session you're in. How does that, how is that for you? Man, at one point it wasn't. <laughs> at least I thought it wasn't, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and, and like I say, bro, our biggest obstacle is always ourselves. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it, it, most of the time, it's just getting out your own way. Um, again, I had to learn that I was a songwriter, bro. So when they start telling me like, hey, we should give this record to such and such or do this, that, and third. With yeah. no hands, I was like, cool, because I understood what I was trying to do. You know yeah. what I mean? And keeping Wale on the record and shit. So it made sense. If Interscope and me had, or if Interscope and Wale had an issue going on, <clears throat> to keep him on the record, it would make sense to give the record to another label. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So boom, that's what I did. But to me, the biggest challenge is always just keeping an open mind and not overthinking or mm-hmm. thinking just the right amount, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because <clears throat> a lot of times we already have, we have to just like go with the flow of what's, what's already in us. Like yeah. I already know in the first three seconds if I like a beat or not. As long yeah. as the drums drop like they're supposed to drop, which if I'm in the right room, it has to. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm good. You yeah. know what I mean? So. Is there any songs that like ended up being hits that when you finished it, you was like, bro, I hate this shit? Yes. Which Good one? Night was one of them. Which one? Good fucking night. I hated that shit. <laughs> I was so mad. So mad they wanted to make that my single, bro. Oh my God. I damn near fell out with the label behind that. I ain't gonna lie. It was either that or like my album around that time. I can't remember, but I don't feel. I actually ultimately got out of my Interscope deal because of a rip over records and shit like that mm. that I didn't want to like. They tried to make me put out. <clears throat> you ever you you know my two point project, bro. The, <laughs> the whole lot of song. They want bro. a whole lot of to be a single for me. But I knew on that project, I'm like, bro, I got two chains. I knew like two chains was gonna be two chains. You know what I'm saying? I knew August Alcina was August. That's why I did what I did. So I'm yeah. like, all that shit came off my phone. I did that whole project wow. off just texting motherfuckers and bumping into them. Lil John yeah. came to the studio. MGK sent me a verse. Like I just got all this shit going. French sent me a verse. All the people you see on it, I just used the relationships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, for them to kind of micromanage my project, they ultimately cut it to an EP. That 2.0 and Juice was supposed to actually, that was all the records I turned in for my album. So yeah. collectively, I was supposed to divide that down and narrow it into part one, part two, whatever. But they ended up cutting it to an EP to keep me in my deal. So that kind of fucked me up. That's crazy. Yeah. Because 2.0 got some shit Boy, on it. I wanted to get a Chris Brown feature on Bro. it, some Nicki shit. I wanted to like... That would have been crazy. I was, trying to, I was trying to do it. But I think at that time, I had too much momentum. And they knew that I was a snowball. And if I ever got off track, they was not going to be able to keep me Yeah. To keep me at. So do you feel like the label is really kind of, really what held you back in certain in aspects? Sense, yeah, for sure. Absolutely, 100%. And I don't say that in a bad way. Like, I think that's most of the time, like, ultimately, when I first signed my deal, I had a really good team. Yeah. But then, like, the next quarter, all the people could be fired or moved to other projects. So that when that shit happened, that's mm-hmm. when shit started to tank. Because now my anchorage that I had, I don't have that no more. Yeah. Having those conversations, be like, oh, you know what? This would be great. Like, cutting them fucking mohawk how I did and putting yeah. the glitter in it, that was a fucking team decision. Like, yo, we should do this. It's going to... Do it's gonna hit you. Yeah. I ain't care that it was. I'm like, bet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so the next week, when motherfuckers don't see that same vision, it alters the way things kind of. And now I'm just kind of relying on showing motherfuckers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But sometimes you got to show them after the fact. Sometimes they got to wait till it comes to fruition for them to really see what it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think that was the disconnect. Yes. Are you still signed with somebody now? Or are you fully independent? Independent. Smart. How do you yeah, think yeah. your career would have changed? Like now you got TikTok. Like you oh, got man, if we was digital, if we was oh, in a, oh my god, <laughs> all the way what? turned up probably would have been yeah. the biggest. Song I think it's to still gonna TikTok. do it. Honestly, if it I'm still like, is. I think I think like a lot of my songs, just like with no hands, no hands went platinum like four times in the last yeah. like year and a half. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's, so to that's me, crazy. And if you look at if you go That's look insane, at the um the little RIAA certification shit, mm-hmm. it gives you all the years that it went to get to the diamond. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So diamond is ten times platinum, but ultimately we went 
like five times platinum, like three times already in over the years. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Mm-hmm. It just depends. So it's a diamond record? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just went diamond this, this past year in 2023. You, ain't there only like that 11 is... diamond records in hip-hop? Yeah. And hey, you got one of them. got one of them all. How the Hey, hey, that, nobody would be able to say nothing to me. I'm waiting on the black right now. He's talking shit in the camera right now. I'm waiting on the... I'm waiting on... I got some space. I'm trying to put some space in here for that shit. It's got to be a... You know what I mean? What? A yeah. diamond record, bro. Like, everybody talk about going platinum, like a uh, million views. And it's, or easy music. To, it's easy nowadays, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, there's so many ways to, like, make a project or a song go gold or platinum or whatever. That's why it happens so fast. Yeah. It's... This shit is WWE, bro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. How, how much of WWE... How much of the propaganda do you think is, like, real? And how much of it do you think is fabricated for, you know, the the the, the numbers? Eye. Y'all see my face, right? Yeah. Okay. A lot. The majority. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say, like, I've seen some things that made me believe, like, nothing's real. And it's, like, and it's, it's not to take away from the artistry, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of dope artists out there. There's a lot of dope musicians. But I think people are kind of scared to, again, be vulnerable. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, go look at Instagram, bro, and scroll and watch how many people have got their like count off. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Facts. Like, or watch it. Like, just go pay attention to it. It's people who are scared to fail, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't, to me, I don't have a bad record because if I just didn't like some shit or I come up with something better, I'm just going to take that record apart and put it over here. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you run out of fucking one type of bread, what you going to do? Go find a fucking hamburger bun or something. <laughs> 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 facts. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's the same shit. Damn. I'm still stuck on the diamond shit, bro. Yeah. yeah that just came out, what, 2012? Uh, or is that 10? 10 or 11? 11, 11, 11, I think. 11. Damn. Yeah, 11. Bro, you have like one of the most iconic like intros to a bar. <laughs> bro, that line. I, bro. <laughs> no, no, and it's not even that line. It's the next line yeah. that had everybody in school. Yeah. Like, Yo, they still I mean, doing it right now on, to, on Twitter. It's still going I'm crazy right now. But a lot of that shit went over a lot of people's heads, man. But to me, it was such a bar because it was like a it was like a multifaceted bar, bro. Like mm-hmm. to me, everybody was going ham. Jay Z and Kanye even had a song called Ham at the time. They made mm-hmm. it hard as a motherfucker. We didn't even know what ham meant until they said that. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? So like, then you had Miss <laughs> Goham. Okay. Yeah. Taking it. Who is so, Miss Goham? Do I need to do research? Yeah. Do a little research. <laughs> research. Okay. She had Miss Goham. Uh, go ham. She had a song back oh, when like Whoop and Rico. Yeah, shit. When Whoop, Whoop oh, Rico see, was like, on the shit like that, Soldier Boy. Era. He yeah. was thinking some other shit. Yeah, he I, was I, thinking OnlyFans. I, I, I was like, Miss Go Ham. Like, how did I miss that one? <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, Janet Jackson right now, boy. They got you out there, boy. Exposed, boy. They got you. Hey. <laughs> Hey, but uh, yeah. To me, it was just it just it went over a lot of people's heads. But I fuck with it. I thought that yeah. shit was like legendary. I mean, shit, bro. That your whole verse, white people recited. Nah, fuck yeah. that. hey, I get videos like every other day about that shit or Facetime calls when it's going on. People are just I don't forgot I gave my number to them and shit, and they just be like, where am I? look where I'm at. <laughs> What's up here? This is crazy. What is the craziest like groupie story oh, that happened man. to you? Can you talk about it on here? Can I? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. This is safe space. What it is, home work. This, I got like a whole two years of my life. I don't even or like, remember. okay, like, before we get to the groupie, what's the craziest like spin back story you had? Somebody who was like, they treated you one way, then you got on, and they treated you like, or they just didn't treat me at all. I just, they just be, yeah, yeah. It'd be like that with a lot of folks. Actually, I still experience that today. Mm. Um, I ain't gonna put their names out there because I don't want to make it a thing. But I did. It'd be some. Hey, they'd be tucked in. Okay? Really, Chris <laughs> Tucker. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn. But, hey. So a- as you were coming up, was it hard for you to navigate like dating with women, oh, like bro, like because mm. you you literally like catapulted to stardom. Yeah. Became a household name. And then I can just imagine, like, back then, shit, was it, we didn't even have DMs, did we? Was it Facebook messages? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually. How, Damn. bro, it's crazy. Because, well, I mean, Twitter was, Twitter was out. Twitter was out, because I did get a lot of cheeks off Twitter, I ain't gonna lie. You got a lot of cheeks off Twitter? <laughs> Boy, I had one joint though. Oh, okay, yeah. I can't say, I can't, I can't say her handle, bro. I can't. Yeah, nah, but nah. it was this joint, bro, and she uh, she used to just always like my uh Twitter posts and shit. She was always active on my shit or whatever. And yeah. one time, bro, I was in DC and I was, I was walking out the club. I forgot what I was doing or whatever, but I was faded, bro. 
lit, okay? <clears throat> and I had been avoiding her little messages for a minute and shit like that, but yeah. I bumped into her and I knew it was her too. Like, I, as soon as I seen her, I said, oh my God. <laughs> and she looked at me and she was like, yeah. <laughs> and you said, yeah. I folded. <laughs> <laughs> I did fold. I fold. I did fold, bro. And I think I had been avoiding her for like two years, bro. No cap. She went through a lot. To get to you? What? Roy. Is that not scary though? Yes. Like that's kind of. I was scared the next morning when I realized what happened. I was like, "Oh my god." Was she from DC? I guess. Oh, I hopefully. Because so. if she was, if she wasn't from DC, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but you know it's tri-state, so like you could be. Yeah, true. Yeah. It's all a hop and a skip, but that shit was wild. That was a wild one. Yeah. Shit, it was hard to get her away from you. Damn. What would you say was one of your most memorable shows that you had? Mm. Like you look back and be like, damn, if I can go back to this moment. I do it a thousand times. Probably Spring Lane, just because I grew up watching it. Yeah. Mm. So being on the stage doing it with Soldier Boy too is like my first real big performance. I think my first two performances were with Soldier Boy. I did uh, "Rip the Runway" for BET, and then we did uh, "Spring Bling." And we yeah. had the big ass stage and shit. And I think Walker and them came out too. It was lit. That was fun. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's Bubba crazy. Vila was another one too, though. Panama oh. City. Oh yeah. Oh my god. We did that shit like three years in a row. Headliner. Crazy. Whole bunch of clubs. Whole bunch of pools in the middle of the floor and shit. It was. Damn. Do do you ever get like uh like being a party um track maker, right? Yeah. Did you ever really get hate from like the oh, the man. boom bap most deaf? <laughs> you know what, bro? On? Honestly, no. Nah. Really? Bro, they fuck with the kid, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Nah, that's what's up. <laughs> Yo, and it, and honestly, it's always I probably had like one situation where a motherfucker rubbed me weird when I met them and I'm like, yeah. oh, acting like that. But it was before I had like no hands and shit. Like yeah. I bet you if I met him after that, he wouldn't have acted like that. Yeah. But um everybody's been pretty cool, dog. Like on whatever side of the spectrum, from fucking Miley Cyrus to fucking uh I don't know, you name it. Who's the craziest person that you met? Like obviously you're in a, a certain music lane. Yeah. Like but you just mentioned Miley Cyrus. Who's the craziest person you met that? I'll tell you like, I probably had the wildest experience. Really? No cap. Sorry. Was it her, like her <laughs> error? Yes. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't trying to get, you know, she'll put you up there. So, but yeah. Wow. What? I'm going to tell y'all, bro, what we did. And I probably shouldn't say this. Just bleep out her name, bro. Like, <laughs> the, the shit is crazy, bro. I met her through like a friend of a friend, right? And... I'm thinking that ultimately I'm gonna end up getting to get in the studio or some shit at the yeah. end of the day. So that's why I was just down to tag along and shit like that. But um, we ended up going to this club, dog. Oh my god, it was like a theater arts like porn club or some shit, bro. I don't know what the fuck was going. On. It was like a club, bro. Like you're in a section and everything, and they got a stage up there with a curtain and the curtain open and closed like this and shit like that. And each time it opens, bro, it's some wild shit going on. I'm talking about like human centipede. Oh Yo, no, okay. She was so lit though in her defense. She was so lit, I don't even think, she wasn't even paying attention to that shit. I think she had like a relationship one time with like a wild dude that was doing some wild shit. It was around that time. So in her defense, please bleep the name, but that shit was crazy. <laughs> Swear to God, I've never seen no shit like that in my life and I never went back. Human oh. centipede is crazy. Wow. He said bro. nothing. <laughs> Yo. On stage? Bro, in the middle of the club. There's a place. What state were you in? LA. On, of, course. Know, it's, of course, of course, of <laughs> course. Wicked, wicked, wicked. wicked. Damn, wicked. just out there like that, bro. I'm talking about. I can't even get into all. Like it's. I was like, bro, where do y'all have me at? Like, <laughs> my boy said, human centipede bro, is on stage. Crazy. Jesus Christ, I can't even imagine that, bro. Just being, imagine being in the section, you see a bunch of ass getting ate in front of you. Some odd, <laughs> bro. It was something, but it, that's it's. When I tell you, that might be the one of the most, but it was a whole bunch of shit going on on that stage. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I made it an hour. Oh, damn, it was like that? Yeah. Are we going to the studio once I start realizing it's too much? Oh, well, we not going to the studio. It's too faded. It don't look like we going to the studio. I'm going to go ahead and slide, man. I'm out this day. That's crazy as hell. What are some of your favorite places to travel to, though? Like Overseas. Mm. So... Right before COVID, up until COVID, I should say, I was doing um, probably like a month or to a month and a half overseas, everywhere from like Japan, Amsterdam, Belgium, Italy, Rome, you name it. Like those, that's probably the hardest shit. Yeah. I, how was Japan? 
fire, bro. Bro, I have to get to Japan. Yeah, you need Japan. to go. I have We've to. We've been talking about it. We've been talking. We gotta yeah. make a shit. You went to Tokyo or Kyoto? Yeah, I was all over the place. Oh wow. Yeah. I went to. I've even been to Okinawa too. Damn. Damn. That shit is beautiful. Crazy. What was there to do out there? Like, what'd you do? A lot of shit, fashion shit, like shopping, yeah. just experience and stuff. Honestly, like they got like these little. Um, I don't know. I won't call them villages, but like a little segment where the shopping district, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And um, just making connections with like the the stores that you can't make the connections with over here. So like I went the first time I went, they opened up the True Religion store, gave us like sixty percent off while I racked up because you know our currency different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just did eight shows over here, but oh, <laughs> <laughs> I ended up getting a whole bunch of shit. I still got the shoes and shit. I got like the um, original Golden Bulls and shit, Italian Converse's, like all this shit. That yeah. You can. Damn. So I, you, you're in the fashion, bro. What is your favorite shoe currently? Fuck. Yeah. The January sixes. <laughs> Trump just dropped. Yo, that was that was that is why. Oh, okay. Let me rephrase it. What's the craziest no. shoe you have in your collection right now? Mm. Damn. I got some kicks, bro. Um, fuck. The craziest kicks are probably my Isaiah shells. Y'all don't even know what them are. I don't. I, I have no give idea. Shout out to my boy Isaiah Shell. That boy having his way out here with the kicks. I'm not sure. to see those. Custom joints. Damn. Yeah. So like what he'll do is he'll um like go to the whatever store you like. It could be anything from Goyard to you name it, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he'll go get a bag or a towel or whatever and he'll take that shit apart and put it in some shoes, bro. Is this like any shoe you want it in? I got vans, I got air forces, I got That's you know, tough. All kinds oh, so of that's shit. all one on one basically. Mm-hmm. I got drop top vans too, without the back on them like slides. I got all kind of shit. Hard. Swear Damn. To you. Yeah. That boy's yeah. cooking. Yeah, see what that closet look like, man. Yeah, not for sure. For you, I'll leave. I'll show you. What, what do you think is the best designer? Oh, that like, if you, if he's you, like, if you, go, if, if you could wear one designer for the rest of your life, which who would it be? Ooh, that's a good. Question. I ain't picking, bro, because you know motherfuckers be watching shit like this, bro. And they be like, you know, you like this. We're not doing. Oh, oh yeah, the fashion people they, yeah, they don't fuck around, and they take this yeah. shit personal. I will well, okay. say the oh, brand that I'm into nowadays that I've been rocking a lot of is this brand called Anti. I think I. It's A T N T E, right? A N T I. A N T I. And it's got an upside down A. I was thinking of Anta for some reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll put y'all down. No, I got okay. you. Okay. Okay, so what was your first designer piece that you bought? Damn. Um, I think I was on this um this brand called Sipo and Bax before it was a thing. And they mm-hmm. used to have like pants in some of my old videos you can um You'll see me wearing them and shit, but they got like two pockets, like two pair of pants put together. Mm -hmm. And so like they'll have like four pockets here and then like if there's a pocket on the side, it'd be like some wild shit like that. But I was on those early. Shout out to Rami. Rami Randall. I don't know if that's still her last name. I think she got married, but that was my um, stylist at the time. Put me down for sure. How important is a stylist coming up? Because you know a lot of people, they just put Put clothes on. It depends. I will say if you you ain't got no... Look, you got to be honest with yourself, okay? (laughs) If you struggle... (laughs) Get you somebody that doesn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because no look is better than a bad look. All right. Some of y'all be out here wilding out. Not gonna yeah. lie. No look is better. Explain that. <laughs> I'd rather not show up to the party than show up to a party I shouldn't be at. Okay. Mm, or okay. show up to a party in a way I shouldn't be. Okay. See the idea right there? <laughs> he <sings>. said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, navigating through the space that you're in, bro, how difficult was it to see who was really there for you? And was just Ooh, there just to shit. get a piece of the pie. Well, these boys didn't dig. Hey, I'm going to say this, man. Like, life is going to life, bro. Yeah. And I know that's a term that people use loosely nowadays, but yeah. like, it really is like that. Like, you ever been in a relationship, bro, <clears throat> or been dealing with somebody that you shouldn't have been dealing with, and you know it's time to get out of that shit, and you hold on to it for, for whatever reason you hold on to that shit? Mm-hmm. The universe is going to move that shit out the way. Yeah. yeah. All right, bro, you had your time. We're going to just get this out of the way because we got to get to the next. You tripping. You know what I'm saying? So I had to go through that a lot. Mm. And uh, and sometimes it was ways that, bro, I don't know. I, like, it ain't no, can't even come back from that type of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but ultimately, I think that it prepares you for the next level of whatever you're going to deal with. So if, if the... If the fuckery on this level is bad, that means it ain't gonna be as bad the next time because you already experienced the way yeah. you, you survived hundred percent of your worst days. Let's put it like that. Yeah, that's a fact. Hey, we gotta clip been. that. We gotta clip that one right there. That's that's something I think everybody needs to hear, bro. Because mm-hmm. shit, you you made it to the next day. Yeah, that it, it can't get no worse. Mm-hmm. And it'd be Damn. tough sometimes, bro. It'd be tough for me too sometimes. Sometimes shit be fucked up. You know, I do a lot of shit. I be traveling, doing a lot of stuff, bro. Sometimes shit just be fucked up. Mm. And you gotta learn how to weather the storm. You can't appreciate having shit if you can't appreciate when you don't have it. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah. So let's take a step away from music, bro. You're, let's talk about the go food. Ahead. Oh, we can talk about you, you've food. been to you've been to a lot of states. What state do you feel like has the best food? Fuck. It's like two. All right. I'm gonna give you my I, I ain't gonna say top five. I'm gonna give you my top couple little. First of all, you've never had pasta till you had pasta from Italy. Mm. There. There's Damn. That. Okay. Like that. <laughs> For real. Okay. I'm already knowing. <laughs> Boom. Um, if I'm talking in state, in the states, I'm gonna say, um, damn, Sweetwater Tavern in Detroit. Okay. Okay. Um, um I'm gonna say, damn, the Deuce in Arizona. The Deuce. Arizona got some good food. Yeah, they out got there. they got the Shepherd's Pie when I was eating meat and shit like that. Pause. That shit was, that shit was crazy. <laughs> yeah, they had this little shepherd's pie. That shit was like that. I drive all the way to Phoenix for that shit. Damn. Um, damn. People going to say I'm tripping for saying this, <clears throat> but I like Ishka Bibbles, bro, in Philly, too. Oh, for real? I only had it like twice, but that shit. It's like one of those things that may not be the best cheesesteak, the most healthiest cheesesteak yeah. you can get. Yeah. But it's like it's gonna a slap. Philly thing. Yeah, like, Who you, what state do you think had like the worst food? You can be honest here. It's hard. That's the honest answer. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Um, damn, what was I watching? Jersey, bro. Pork. Oh my god. Everything is pork in Jersey. What? Yes. I didn't know that. Mm, I did not know they that. They got like ham roll yeah. things, like these little. Yeah, I ain't. So damn, that's the state with the worst food to you. To me, I only say? been to Jersey like twice though. I, I can't vouch for any of their food like that. So hold on, you said you're not eating meat. Pause. You a vegan? Vegetarian. Vegetarian. Yeah. vegetarian. Fully. I've been what, that way for like six years. What made Damn. you go vegetarian? I watched What the Hell. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but before then, it was like, it wasn't sitting right with me. In my defense, like, it wasn't sitting right with me at first. And so I like went pescatarian for a minute. Then I felt like, I'm weird like this, bro. This shit gonna be funny. I already know it. <laughs> I'm weird like this, bro. So I felt like I ate like every fish under the sea. I already got like this little water phobia, right? Yeah. I take baths though. Showers. But I got this water phobia. And so I always felt like, if you eat all this fish, bro, them fish know you done ate the fish, bro. Like, these, niggas, these niggas know you done did that shit, bro. Like, like, you can't eat fish and then go kick it in some water and think the fish is going to be cool with that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, I feel can you, a nigga that's smoke a crazy your pot and say, go sit on the... Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to go get in the ocean and yeah, crab one crawl by. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm straight, bro. Like, I just don't... I'm cool. Smell their cousin inside you. Hey, I'm good, on. bro. We got me. Yeah. Oh, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you talking about? That yeah. shit is crazy. But that's... what the hell cleared my refrigerator out same day, for sure. And never looked back. Damn. Damn. So what are some of your um, uh, vegetarian meals that you make? Um... I do a lot of different shit, bro, honestly. Um, sweet potato steaks, portobello steaks, pastas, um, rice bowls, and shit like that. It's it's really about how you season your food, honestly. Yeah. So if you know how to cook, bro, then it's that shit like making a song to me is the same. That's why I hate when people be like, well, why they make fake chicken? You don't like chicken. You like the way chicken, chicken. season. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's what people be liking. But going up to there, uh, going over to uh, Betty and them Korea. I bet you don't like that chicken, boy. That chicken <laughs> is not the same chicken. That's a different bird. <laughs> so I'm telling you. Like, I've never Betty. had chicken this dry in my life. Like straight. damn, veget full time vegetarian. So I think that shit helped me. Like so, you really don't eat out, huh? Not for real. I mean, if I do, it's like. On a, it's like somewhere that makes sense. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I, I, I don't. That don't stop me from going. I still go to like kick it with the homies or do some other shit. My spot now that I've been going to a lot um, is Velvet Taco. Really? Have Velvet, Ve Velvet Taco mm. like that? Better than Bar Taco? Yes. Oof. Way. Oh. Where's that at? This in the uh, city? How Mill. I ain't gonna I lie. Live. Okay, I'm gonna pull up. Velvet Taco. It's they, down they the street. Got, yeah, it's down the street. Yeah, um, they got like a couple. That. That's wild. Uh, yeah. I I have never not, been to Velvet Taco. <laughs> <laughs> so is it hard like being a vegetarian and like traveling and like sometimes? But I be putting that shit on my rider, bro. I make them do that shit. Fuck that, bro. Oh yeah, gotta, what? Man, what? I put that shit right on the little list of shit we need when we pull up. Oh, oh. Hold on, I'm forgetting. But I'm thinking like a regular nigga. Like <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like a regular nigga. I'm like a what? I ain't made it there yet. I ain't made it there yet. Yeah, I heard the word, but I was gonna use context clues. <laughs> yeah, that's man. funny as fuck, bro. Hey, Damn. man. 
Yeah. So okay, bro. I I just want to know what so being a celebrity. Oh my god. What what is that to you? Like what is it? Like what does it feel like being a celebrity? I can't even put quotes because you I don't are. Even, I don't even honestly, bro. You know how I, you know I've always been like this, bro. I don't, yeah. And I think anybody who's come in contact with me, I've always been the same way. You know what I'm saying? I don't really treat myself like that. Yeah. I just didn't accomplish some shit. You know what I'm saying? That's how yeah. I look at it. But I still, I love people, bro. Like, so mm -hmm. to me, and it's not just black people or none of that. Like, I love people, good people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So <clears throat> to be amongst them is more important than not. You know what I'm saying? And putting yeah. myself in a pedestal to not be around people. So I right. still, I could grocery shop and do all that shit. I don't give a fuck. People yeah. be coming to me like, yo, I'll be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, it, it's crazy hearing you talk. Cause like, I've known you for a long time and I've never really like, I, you don't give off like shit. I'm famous as fuck. Y'all yeah. mm -hmm. niggas just nah. You don't do that. So yeah, like yeah. that's why I asked you like, bro, how? Like, it's crazy because a lot of people probably see you like, oh my god. Yeah. Do you know that's who it is? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah, I'd be like, I'm cool. Does it ever feel weird like you're in a room and you know people looking? For oh yeah. Them? And they're scared to come out and ask a question. Sometimes I just I'll break the ice then if that's yeah. the case. Like I'll be getting a kick out of that type of shit. I just love watching people in they in they element, bro. Like in they bag, whatever that bag is. Like yeah. if, so, if somebody. Pissed off and they mad and they sit in the corner. They really don't want to be somewhere. I'm gonna notice that shit. I'm like, oh look, shorty, no, I'm gonna go fuck with them. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what, what we drinking, bro? What, you, what we gotta do? Like, smile, nigga. What the fuck? So that's I just, I don't know. I'm just like that. Yeah, nah, that's dope, bro. Like we, you are one of the few that like have your status that like truly stay humble. Like, yeah. you're a very humble person. I like, it. nigga, if. If somebody didn't know you, like if an old white lady just didn't know anything about music. I had music. to talk with a white lady earlier in the story. In public. <laughs> bro, I'm going to tell you the story. It's shit crazy, bro. Did you say this shit? It's so, <laughs> like, shit be is so insane, bro. We had this conversation off camera about like the chakras and your energy and shit. Yeah. Like, it's just wild, bro. Because when you truly are doing what you're supposed to be doing, bro, shit just be aligning so crazy. You be like, damn, I was just talking about that. Damn, I just seen that. Or damn, I thought about this and that shit happened the next day. Like, yeah. It just be like that. So this morning I go to Publix because I had this early ass session and last time I went to this session I was hungry as fuck because we was in there for like four or five hours. So yeah. um, today I slept in a little bit. I had to be at the session at like 10. So I stopped by Publix. I was like, I'm going to get me a little fruit thing for the gang at the studio and shit like that. And I needed some creamer for my coffee because I ran out. So I made the coffee and then went to the thing, got the creamer, whatever. Boom. As I'm checking out, I was like, damn, my hands ashy as fuck. It was some old people in front of me, some older people in front yeah. of me and shit like that. And uh, they were checking out. They had a few items. I was really irritated because it was like one aisle open and I was about to be late. Yeah. But something in me just said, just chill out, bro. It's cool. So I went to go get some hand lotion and shit like that. When I came back, the lady who also was uh, older, who was checking us out and shit like that, she had rang up all the items with the older people and shit like that up front. Yeah. So we had to go through this whole second transaction to go to customer service and do it. So it gave us time to talk and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. And a dude said some shit to me, bro, that I was like, damn, nigga. Like, see, I, that's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. He was like, you know, man, if this is the worst thing that happens to us today, we're in pretty good shape. I said, yeah. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using that, bro. That's yeah. hard. If this is the worst shit that I got to deal with, bro, cool. That's a fact, yeah. though. We look at life, I feel like a lot of people look at life and just think certain shit means it's the end of the world. When yeah. in Which reality, is, it can be overwhelming sometimes, yeah, right? It like, can it be, be like for sure. That. We all get that way. But mm -hmm. that's why it's important, bro, to be vulnerable. And for us specifically, because we don't have a safe space to do that. And even for women, because sometimes it ain't safe for them and they element to come speak to us about certain yeah. shit yeah. that may not be logical enough for us to address or we might be too big. You know what I mean? Whatever yeah. the case may be. So I think it's about for everybody, bro, to just be vulnerable. Why are you with somebody you can't tell the truth to? Yeah. yeah. Even if you want some bullshit, like, hey, I'm having, I don't know, what's up, babe? I'm, I, I like this OnlyFans chick. I can't get off this shit. Like, <laughs> maybe we need to like, I don't know. Like, she, you know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah. saying, whatever the magnitude of the situation is, yeah. bro. Like, you should be able to be comfortable enough. You, if you can do it, you should be comfortable enough to speak on it. Yeah, and that got me out of a, out of a lot of situations and died. That's a lot that's of a work. fact though. Okay. Yeah, if you do it, like, cause a lot of people they do stuff but they never want to talk about it. Yeah, and that tells you you shouldn't be doing. It, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, that situation was a little too specific. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually matched a lot of shit. What okay. I was thinking, what I was thinking about, honestly, bro. If I'm keeping it a band with you, and I don't know why the fuck I thought of this while the camera rolling, but what I really thought about, bro, was the situation I had um, when I was on Love and Hip Hop for them two episodes and shit yeah. like that, and how <clears throat> that situation could have and was prompted to evolve into some whole other shit, and mm -hmm. they kept painting narratives like so. They had to try to do the lift shit because they missed on everything else. Like, yeah. like let's try this next. Well, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, but. Not indulging in that situation, being who I am and doing what I could have done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And I didn't do it because I never wanted to have to lie about doing it. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, for whatever reason, I could have just did my thing and got did whatever everybody else or whoever else is doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But instead, I was like, you know what? If I was asked this shit in an interview, because motherfuckers is going to ask me. Yeah. I don't ever want to have to lie about that shit. I just started applying that shit to life. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. That's a good approach, though. It's a great approach. Because shit, you'll avoid a lot of the BS that, that goes on mm-hmm. if you don't. And you'll feel it. more comfortable doing yeah. the shit you like to do, whatever it is. Like, I want to be kind of want to have to do some shit and be like, oh, let me make sure ain't nobody watching me. Like, nigga, if I want to fucking do whatever the fuck, I'm going to do it, like, yeah. <laughs> comfortably. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so when did you tap into, like, the energy stuff? Because you mentioned, like, the chakras and Yeah. Actually, bro, it's crazy because I came in contact um, with some um with these two individuals actually two chicks that kind of like guided me into that shit and mm. i had to be like 22 at the time yeah and then ultimately i started going through shit you know we we can be a little negligent sometimes and mm-hmm. like i said we be in our own way and shit so i had to go through a couple other bad relationships yeah. to actually sit yeah. my ass down and be like okay i need to fucking figure this shit out this yeah. is terrible like why am i you ever been in a situation to be like why is this shit happening to me? Yeah. And genuinely be confused, like, bro, what did I do? To, like, <laughs> like, like, what damn, the what? fuck, dog? Yeah. Like, so in them moments is when you got to sit still, bro. And sometimes sitting still is better than having emotion. You know what yeah, I mean? Facts. Like, give you time to reflect and do all that other shit. And I think that's the type of selfish people should be is like self-reflecting. You yeah. know what I mean? Like self-loving, shit like that. And that also goes with being vulnerable with self and shit yeah. like that. Like, you can't. Step out here and be who you want to be until you know who you are already. Yeah. That's real. That's real. A lot of people really don't know who they are. A lot of people still are trying to find out what their identity truly is. And we're getting that shit from a million different ways every day, bro. Like, you got to think of how much, like, like we talked about, bro, from going from having just Twitter and shit like that to having all these unlimited apps. I challenge everybody to go watch The Social Dilemma on this. Social. Yo, this, I he, swear. Bro, bro, he's cooking right now. I'm he's you, cooking. Dog. Like it's right in front bro, of our face because they gotta show it to bro, you. They yeah. they literally like apps get paid mm-hmm. by the app like developers. The usage. Mm-hmm. Because like to get you back on the phone. So like say you got a notification yeah. from Instagram. That's valid. But Instagram knows you're not gonna pick up your phone. Mm-hmm. They'll save the notification. And then as soon as you turn your phone over, mm-hmm. they'll send a notification to get you to get back on your yep. phone. Because yep. that unlocks you back into like the, the marketplace of, of the data. internet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which we signed over already. Yeah. Which they're using and trading like fucking stock market every yeah. day. Yeah. That yeah. One. Damn. Social Dilemma is one of them ones, bro. I got to tap in because I've never seen it. Yeah. I'm going to send you a list, bro. I got you. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to gonna beat you over the head with that shit. But I'm going to just put it right there for you to just, whenever you get ready. Social Dilemma, Fantastic Fun Guy is a good mm-hmm. one. Um, I'm trying to think of another, like... The Minimalist. There's a few the of them. The Coach's yeah. Playbook. It's a few of them motherfuckers. Yeah. Like. Coach's Playbook is a good one. You should watch that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, bro. You dropping a lot of gems. <laughs> and this is the side that... This is why we do this pod, bro. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't... Nobody would think that, oh, damn, he's tapped in this much with himself. Yeah. And, like, mm-hmm. you're this good with yourself. Like, bro, like, this is this is the beauty of this, bro. And I'm, sure. I, I appreciate, appreciate you so much for, like, sure. allowing us in your space. Because this is sure. The home is beautiful. Bro. <laughs> yeah, it's facts. <laughs> the home is beautiful. <laughs> so you. I also got, I want to ask for myself, because I'm just curious, like, what is a day in a life of you like? Like, what does the day look like for you? Whatever the fuck it need to look like. Like, that day. When you, honestly, like, some days, bro, I be doing regular shit, like, I don't know, like playing the game or some shit. I just be chilling. You know when you're the rap, when you're when you're the rapper for the day, but I, I'll do it. I'll do it in between. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like sometimes yeah. I'll I'll literally sit here and be rapping, and if I get stuck on some shit, I'm like, I'm gonna play the game. This shit piss me off for me. And yeah. doing that, I'll be thinking about it or doing it in between matches or whatever. It just depends. Other times I'll be in dad mode most of the time, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, even that has like it serves its own purpose in my creative side as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So encountering certain things or seeing shit that my kids deal with or other shit like that will help me tap into certain areas as well. So, um, or just like relationships or fellowshipping with the homies about shit they're dealing with, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So, how is it like being a father and also in this space man, that you're this in? Shit is real. And the thing is, is that it makes you understand perspective. You feel what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you can have a kid, bro. Like I've had two children since my career started, since I got my career going and shit like that. Uh, my first one came when I was in high school. So she mm. has a different perspective. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. She saw me kind of get Take into off. it and shit like that. My other ones, 
my youngest specifically, I'm Roscoe Dash. Like, yeah. I'm dad, don't get me wrong, but yeah. like, my dad's Roscoe Dash. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, like, you know what I'm saying? My, my middle child, my 11 year old, she's not so much on that no more. Like, when I take her with me to do a lot of shit too, I've been trying to do that more this year because mm-hmm. she's with me full time. So I'll be trying to like, bring her to the games or like she came to Vegas with me to play in the football game and shit like just to give her a different experience to see what it's like what I have to deal with so when I'm not with you this is what I'm going to don't think I'm out here just having fun all the time this shit work. Yeah, yeah. and this shit hurts <laughs> like, yeah so what, what are your like top five video games of all time damn damn that's a I'm good a man, question I'm a man like I'm like that okay man. yeah um you, you so uh, Kai wages you and Madden. How much you putting up? All them, all of them would lose money to me. I'm just <laughs> in Madden, based off of what I'm seeing, yeah, absolutely. In Madden, it's a chick that's like that on the game. I think she can beat them too. Like she uh, on Instagram, like right? Yeah, black the black girl, yeah, right? Yeah. She is tough. She like that. I cook her too though, but she like that. I'm not throwing the ball doing all that extra shit. Bro. Hold on, I'm not, bro. I don't. I'm like, I have two controllers, bro. Like it's, it's like, what you got? It's Xbox. Yeah, you're a Madden person. I'm not a Madden person, but we... If you really play, you're ambidextrous, and you can play on whatever console. Oh, no, I am. Well, no, first of all... <laughs> yeah, we give I'm a I'm not ducking anything. Ambidex, ambidex me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ducking you at all, but it's just crazy hearing niggas say, oh, I'm like that in Madden. Yeah, I've man. only met one person that who was that truly... Person? You might know him, Tay. You know me, so I'm trying to figure <laughs> out who that person is. Devontae. <laughs> tall Devontae Ingram. Went to Mill Creek. Yeah, but he ain't better than me. <laughs> That nigga tough, bro. I like that though. We gonna have to see. You play two K? Yeah, I play that too. Are you, Are you like, like that, that in two K? <laughs> look at y'all camera too. What? <laughs> nah, this nah, is the thing, bro. Two K is two K, bro. Like, yeah, I'm it is. Cook. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook on two K yeah. too. I'm better on Madden. I'm not gonna lie, but two K is like that. Mm-hmm. You could be good and still lose. Like, don't get it fucked up. The people who be winning and doing all that wild shit, let's keep it a band, bro. They pick one team. They yeah. have a specific way they play with their team. They got a specific amount of plays that they run. I, when niggas start running plays in 2K, yeah. I'm out of there. Like, I ain't gonna lie, run plays. Case in point. But yeah. see, that's just to make niggas move around. I'm he, like that. But if but you know, you can have a better basketball game freelancing if, if everybody can play basketball and you're the everybody. So yeah. like, let's Thanks. play it. Yeah, okay, so Madden. But you can run your plays, though. I ain't tripping. Oh, like, no, yeah, I'm, I'm going to. Yeah, that's cool. I'm with that. Once I figure it out, you're going to have to. I hope you got there's, a lot of them. There's that's, nothing to figure out. Like, you're cat. not going to figure the shit that's out. That's cat. Oh, okay. There's no reason. I'm, I'm one of the ones on 2K. I know that. I like that. I like ones. being the best. That's cool. So, okay, you said 2K. Madden's number one. What's number two for you? Is it 2K? Call of Duty, then 2K. Oof. We can do that, too. I'm like that on that, too. I, I, I'm i definitely. I can do that. Right. I can do that. He, he, he played, too. What y'all playing? Y'all multiplayer or y'all multiplayer? Playing? I hate that shit. I play though. I'm so good. You know, Warzone? Don't get me wrong, but I, I'm good. But I'm a Warzone. So I'm, I'm like not a Warzone, Warzone person, bro. That's because I'll... y'all ain't got a good squad, bro. And I want squad. You know what it is? Y'all have too many. The map too big. To like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> the, the fuck going on? The it's six people in a party. Yeah, the fuck? Fact. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. literally but, eight. Yeah. When I that's why I don't play Battlefield. The map too big. I like close quarters. Who gonna get we gonna do that? We gonna do that. I'm gonna be honest. Resurgence is like that. Resurgence gonna put you in a smaller map. You gonna bro? You gonna get smoking Resurgence. I'll be honest, bro. And you can die a few times and come back. You ain't gotta go to that stupid ass. Gulag shit. Oh yeah, fuck that. Niggas is tripping. Battlefield was one of them ones. It was cool. Battlefield. I ain't never was, get into it. But I respect Duty, it though. though. It, it wasn't Call of Duty, but the Battlefield Hardline, nigga. I think I had the what's the first open map joint where the buildings was falling and shit. Uh, it was hard. It was Hardline. It was Hardline. Whatever that one was, I played that one. That shit was fire. But it was intense though. It was like. Well, it might have been three. Might have been three. Yeah. Was, yeah, I think it was three. But it's, it had a lot going on. Okay. So, so Call of Duty, Madden, Madden Call of Duty. Then I say 2K. 2K. And uh, if we're talking competitive, I'm going to say UFC and Mortal Kombat. If you do not want problems in Mortal Kombat. Oh, I put bro, that on my My dog my with the bear. Bojitsu stick is like that, okay? <laughs> I'm letting you know right now. The dog, my, I don't know his fucking name, but the dude with the fucking stick, I'm whooping your ass every time. <laughs> promise you. Okay. All right. Which, sure. which Mortal Kombat? The new one? It don't matter. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The cameras might get cut in a minute. I'm going, I'm going, I'm telling you right now, I'm going at least three for five. Like, really four. We'll see. We're going to have to see. Damn. Okay, you say you're on Xbox. You, you got to get a PlayStation, bro. You're Xbox right. is, is, is falling off. That nigga Y'all right need but you got the But you got cross compatibility anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You play, you, you uh, tapped into the PC world yet? Mm-mm. Well, I've tapped into it, but I still got a little see, bit of smoke. That's where the real gamers are. I'll be playing on, um, you, y'all been to Access Replay? Uh-huh. Downtown off Crock Street, they got like a little gaming center shit. Fine, I'm gonna show oh, you. Oh, for real? Oh, yeah. Hard. And they do live concerts in there and shit too. 
Damn. But, Access um, replay. Let me write that that's down. That's where all the PC motherfuckers at. And bro, it's different. Nah, it them is. niggas are gamers for yeah, real. I got homies that shoot with iron sights, like shoot you off the top of the building from like with the yeah. music. Like, how? Bro, they use that mouse. That's niggas cheating. that play with the keyboard and mouse. Put is them different. niggas on their own platform. I like that shit better when they, <laughs> make them niggas go to the fucking go to Walmart or wherever the fuck and go get you a hard disk to put in your fucking thing. We don't even want you niggas to be on downloading servers or none of that shit with us. Like let the consolers be the consolers and let the PCers be the PCers. Yeah, nah. Bro, because I, we used to play Apex bro. when they had cross platform. Bro, we I got in the Apex. lobby with some PC. Boy, hated it was it's different, cooking. Bro. Hated Apex. I can't play Call of Duty and like Apex. What? I don't and like I, Apex either. And I really came from PUBG, that's why. See, PUBG was some trash, all right? It was. It, but, was. it was. But I came from there. So I can't go to. It's hard for me to even. I'm only doing. I'm only trying to get into the Fortnite shit before the streaming thing. Yeah, and that's a stretch for me. Yeah, I need to like. I can't do Fortnite, bro. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm in the streets. I can't. I got my one win two years ago. I hung it up. <laughs> Fortnite tough though. Sometimes. No, Fortnite. Lately, is the I've been one. on the zombie shit though. On Cod. Yeah, that, I need to get back hard. on zombies. I got a tab back. I tried it, bro. It's, it's just, different. It's, it's not hard. the same. The, the, I played, but they have the old maps though, right now. Nah, it's a big yeah. ass map now. Oh, bro, for that real? shit, and it's not levels I'm, to it, bro. That shit is. I might bro. download that. I like, that like that's how I got nice. Uh, my homie Devin, he he put me in the lobby. They was playing hardcore. My KD was like, I was going zero in like sixteen. I was ass. Oh yeah, that should do that. Hardcore but he, he is the one now. They they trained me one night, and uh, nigga. Paul, yeah, big Paul. Yeah, no, I was that was nuts. I was, I was just <laughs> That's crazy. Well, you said I had to sit back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to tap out of this one. That was insane. We, we had played zombies. We went to like level <laughs> like round 33, some shit like that. Yes, yes. But I was cold after that, though. I uh, know. Nah, this new zombies now. Bro, it's basically war zone with zombies. It is. It's, it's, it's a lot. Like I'll put y'all down. No, I'll get y'all all the little weapons and shit. I got like a lot of that shit already. I, I got a homeboy that's, that's on that Call of Duty shit for real. Hex it's is, fun, bro. It, bring back, it made me feel like the old shit. But I feel like high school yeah. again, bro. Okay, so this is my other question since we're talking about games. Smash Brothers. Smash, oh, I'll watch anybody. Anybody. I got a 64 at the crib. I have one upstairs. Oh, <laughs> uh, see. I'll, and I got the Wii U one. So whichever one I, you want. Look, 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 look. Smash Bros on 64, I will give you three times my stock and I'll beat you. So Damn. I'll take five lives, you got 15. You know what? You didn't I'm even a, ask me who I play with. Yet. I don't care. It you're doesn't talking about, matter. You're talking about on well, 64? 64, 64 just, yes. Hey, nah, you're wild. He said, I'll have five lives, you have 15. Yeah, I'll give him three times my stock and I'll That's beat him. That's crazy as fuck. Boy. That's disrespectful as shit. It don't matter That's... who you play with. I'll play with Star Fox. Oh, that's why. For all the people who have seen me play this game, y'all know this is Cap. <laughs> okay? I'm telling you right now. On the original joint, you know, I really play with Mario. I'm going to let you know right now. Uh, yeah, so Star, yeah, Star, the Star Fox Kryptonite. That's me. I do, yeah, I'm on that. <laughs> and then on the other joint, I'm playing with Shulk. If I get Shulk, bro, in a new game, nobody's Oh, yeah. In, anything past 64 Smash Bros, you got it. 64 no, Smash Bros, that. though? I watch know, I that. I've never been good at Super Smash Bros. That's good. I would just stay out of it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even gonna put myself in this conversation. Yeah, they're gonna make you feel. Terrible. Now, I, what I will say, let's talk about Def Jam Five in New York. We run that back. What? I never played that. I have it. Next Swear time I come, God. I'm gonna have that shit set up. I promise. Next time I'm about to put a little projector up. I got all the old. Oh, I got a little El, shit, El, Elgato capture card. We can record it. Go oh, ahead. I'm not gonna lie. We gotta run that. That shit was like that. That was one. Def- I want them to bring that back. They bring that back on the new systems. Oh my god. <laughs> you gotta be in it. Can I get it? Can I get in a documentary first? <laughs> can I get in a mother? Can y'all not skip my whole shit? Like, can we talk about that? Can we talk about all these Atlanta fucking documentaries and shit? And we ain't in this shit. Why? I mean, not just me, but my dogs too. Why we ain't in there? I'm gonna ask this. Why do you? Why do you feel like they don't give you the respect that you deserve? Like, why don't you get that? Because it sounds like you don't play like the industry. That's probably what it is, bro. Like, because I don't really be. It sounds like you go do business, get, cause people at that party they would have stayed out, there. But I be outdoors though. Yeah. I do be outdoors. Like I'll kick it and mingle and do all that shit. Like when I'm outside, I'm outside. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm chilling. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. like, it be it be. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't taking that one. Like that's that's on them. Like yeah, they, they just be. Sometimes people be in their own. Sometimes people be so embedded in their own shit though that it just don't even make sense to them till that till you gone already. Yeah. yeah, I just think it's weird though, cause bro, when when you talk about Atlanta music, how do you leave off Roscoe Dash, bro? Like that was an era. Yeah. Like 
I said this on the last pod, bro. You had a T Pain run that was like. And yeah, T Pain one of them ones too. That's, that's but like what my, y'all my runs story. were literally the same. No, if I'm sure. being completely no, honest, sure. like because I'm trying to think like the bridge between like the Ti Ludicrous era and the current era started with you, right? Yeah, it, it was to. you, Travis Porter. People would try to give it the future, but back then, I mean, but we, to me, honestly, like, bro, if I'm keeping it a band, like not even making it about me, dog. Like I feel like. There's so many people that contributed to that wave. Yeah. Even from the DJ standpoint, bro. You know what I'm saying? Space Invaders? Yeah. That's where I found out who Helicopter Kids was and all that before they was who they are today. Yeah. The rich kids, the the band geeks, the the real, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that shit came from the gas station CDs, bro. The yeah. Space Invader motherfuckers, like. Yeah. And not only them, it's other people too. The MLKs, Geronimo's, the Tank yeah. Spins. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a plethora. The K Camps, even Sean Teasy them. Uh, kid before he was Sire the Kid. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot yeah. of different shit that was going on that like they just skipped the whole joint. Yeah. And K Camp is still doing this shit right now. Yeah. Still. Currently. <laughs> okay. Like still. it just don't make sense to me. Like how you can K K Camp probably would be the second most underrated. Like. Yeah. That man was cooking, and still, bro, like like you said, still making mm-hmm. music to this like good I, shit. I stay yeah. tapped in with motherfuckers, bro. Even the ones who, and I understand. Even sometimes motherfuckers will have that chip on their shoulder, right? And like, yeah. I can see that. I'm I'm blessed with a discernment to be able to see shit for what it really is. Right? Yeah. So I don't even hold it against niggas like Camp if he wanted to be walking a party and be on his shit. Where you know what I'm saying? Because I know where you come from. They got yeah. get why we was the niggas that was in the studio. I was with working with niggas that were overlooked. You was trying to get in it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, you gotta wait because da, 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 da. I've been there for that type of yeah. shit. So I get why when you in your bag, you in your bag. Like, I'm cool yeah. with that. Just don't do that shit to the niggas that understand that. You know what right. Man? That's all I ask. Cause bro, I, there's a lot of respect that you don't get that you deserve. Like a lot of artists, bro. I, I'm gonna I'm go down the list, bro. Rich homie Quan don't get the respect yeah, he deserves. Yeah, fuck with too. Bro, like, Rich homie Quan don't get his. Shit, school don't get his. I was gonna mm. say Rich kids. That's <laughs> it's a lot, bro. So it's just, I wanna know what, like, that disconnect, where did that, what happened? I what made no folks idea. say. But I, I think it's gotta do with that bridge shit that I was talking about, yeah. bro. Like, I think it's like, I don't know, bro. I think, I think it's a lot of, it's like, weird. Gatekeeping going on. Oh, yeah, for sure. Shit. Like, it's, it's a little weird. Like, now, when I see certain people, bro, it's love. Like, when I got verses from certain people, like Chains and them, like, Chains didn't charge me for that verse I got on 2.0. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he just did it off the love. He used to pull up to our shows. At, me and Travis Porter would be doing shows and shit. He'll pull up just to come fuck with us and shit. Yeah. Dunk and them, God rest his soul. Like, niggas was just pulling. We fuck with each other because we fuck with each other in the camaraderie of being around one another. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think that's what's missing in today's, like, I don't know. That shit weird. Yeah. Even the motherfuckers who claim to be cool, they ain't they ain't cool, but for like this long, and again, it yeah. was over with. Yeah, that shit is crazy. I think a lot of money and a lot of ego got into it, Absolutely. and there's not a lot of love. At mm-hmm. least the people who love it, they don't rise to that level. Mm-hmm. They just it's too much independence out here. Like I'm not about the, and they don't want love to win, right? Like they make more money with motherfuckers beefing and being at odds and shit like that. You can almost, yeah, like you can almost like double or or magnify. The productivity in that space, I guess. So I get it from a business standpoint, but it's got to be a balance there. You know what I'm saying? Like even when we came up before, when you had like the rivalries and this, that, or the third, even the East versus West or the yeah. North South, whatever the fuck it is, like it was structured. Yeah. Know? So when you was coming up, who do you think was your biggest like when it was like Roscoe Dash versus this person? Who was it for you? Was it Travis Porter? They always men tried to mention me and yeah. Travis together, but I, I never really looked at it like that. Um, and I think that that kind of ultimately halted a lot of things that could have came. Yeah. And it didn't. I didn't realize this till, like maybe a conversation we had like maybe a year or so ago mm-hmm. when we started working on um, Streets RS two and yeah. Walk Up Bridge that gap. He was like, "Man, y'all boys get together. We'll, we'll, we need you in Vegas. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll pay for the ticket, nigga. Just come." So I came. We had it out at the spot. We didn't everybody go outside and hook in. Damn. And it, but it made sense to me once we got it out the way. Like. What the issue was. I asked, I was like, bro, I'm tired of hearing about them. I'm tired of seeing y'all on no jumper. I'm tired of seeing, I'm tired of all that shit. So, why do y'all keep going back and talking about this shit and letting motherfuckers loop y'all in to be on this, that, and that? This is why we can't get a tour. This is yeah. why we can't get, you see what I'm saying? Like, they, you're allowing them to paint the narrative and it ain't their story to tell. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't know, man. Like, ultimately, it ended up being a thing where a lot of records that we did together, like the Banana record, it's a lot of records that we had. Have her singing like the half. It's like a whole bunch of records that they didn't get to use because we had that riff. 
Yeah. Because yeah. I was on a lot of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, nigga, we couldn't use this, that, or the third. We had to date it, da, da, da. It just made shit harder for us. Mm-hmm. And I, I get it. I understand. So, Do you think there will ever be a moment when everybody could come together and be like, Absolutely. you know what? Let's well, we got put songs. All... We, we got I'm talking songs. about, like, let's fuck all that. Let's come together and run a tour. I would love to do that. I, th- imagine... I got mad about the Millennium Tour turned up shit. I thought, like... Why we don't have that? Yeah, that's what. I, could you imagine having that for Atlanta? Yeah, could you like if you if you were to put together like an Atlanta powerhouse festival, like what would be your lineup for that? If you can get ten acts and put it together, just from Atlanta? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn. Okay, I would do me, Waka, Travis Porter, Rich Kids, Migos. If Thug was out, gotta have Thug on that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, baby, um, ain't Russ from out here too? Yeah, Russ. Russ yeah, I have Russ. Russ. From out here. I would have Russ. Uh, where's um Baby Tate from? Ain't she from here? I don't know. I'm not sure. Damn, I feel like you're forgetting one. No, big... I'm going. I'm gonna get no, that. No, no. Okay, okay. I don't know. I don't know where she's from. I don't, I don't know. know where she's from. All right, I'm gonna take her off there. Okay. okay. Um. Damn, see, now you done fucked up my cadence. Um, <laughs> who's my two? Give me one. Go ahead. Future. Duh. Okay, okay. but don't don't name another one. Um, okay. Damn. Yeah. You, got another, you got another one? I got another one. All right, go ahead. Rich homie. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, bet. <laughs> that would that. be with that. a hell of a show. Oh, yeah. my God. I'm Imagine that festival, bro. Mm-hmm. That'd Who be crazy. It? I, think it, I think we alternate. That's the only way I think that we okay. All right. I ain't know if you was about to say this. No, no, no. I, I was gonna make a suggestion, but I don't know if I want to do that. Like, I'm not saying Revolt World. You know, next year could definitely mix that in. They could right? mix that in. It would behoove them yeah. to do that. Because <laughs> um, the lineup they had this I year. I think. I think if we. I think if it was a headliner situation, I think. I think it would have to be. A collective headline, mm. like I think No Hands or, um, and we gotta bring obviously bringing out people who are on the records and shit like that. That's yeah. what's gonna make it crazy, and I think the records that we all have together, we do those. Yeah, that would be tough. I feel like it, or one music fest could put that like th- yeah, that, it's like, like they tried up. to give us well, they act like they tried to give us a set, but the thing is, is that it's always one person. It's not enough heads on collective, the same thought. Yeah. yeah, like collective thoughts behind it. I should say. Just wish, bro. So we'll end up on somebody's set. And I hate that because it's like minimizing what we could be doing. Yeah. Yeah, like if, if One Music Fest was like, all right, you know what? We're going to pay homage to the turn up era and just... That would be nuts. That, that would be insane, insane bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, it's, the, the segment itself is unmet. Like me personally, bro, when they was doing the versus shit, I thought the only nigga that could ever see me in a versus battle of any caliber would be Soldier Boy. So when Soldier Boy didn't did his shit, and I only say that because Soldier Boy produces and shit like that. Yeah. Too. yeah. So I give him that for the songwriting. But when it comes to anybody else, I don't give a fuck who you put up there. Like this, especially not for my era. I don't care if it ain't Outkast or one of them niggas that came before me that really put out eleven albums, shit like that. Like it's not even a discussion to me. So you and Soldier Boy versus what's the final score? Ooh, boy, is this including everything? Yes. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. But I think that's the only person that can really like, like make it a competition. Yeah. So, that's tough. That's a good versus. I think so. That's he a already good win, though. So yeah. You know. Guess who we got him. Who do you go against? You went against Bow Wow? No. It was Bow Wow, wasn't it? It was. That shit was, was Bow- too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that. Cause he was wilding out. That was like right around that Breakfast Club interview time when he was oh, Drake. Shit. Yeah, he went nuts. I fuck with Soldier Boy. So Soulja Soulja Boy probably one of the best marketers of all time. Oh, one hundred percent. And that's what that's part of it. Like nobody knew he fucking made all them beats. They were yeah. pulling up Nicki Minaj beats and shit. Where Holmes is going? Nothing. He was playing a Drake song. <laughs> yeah, okay? like, like, like whoa, hold up, bro, chill out, relax, dog. That's ri- what's the one feature that I already asked you this. What's the one song you did? That never got to come out. That you just know. Oh my god! I got a couple been. of them. I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> Originally, when I first did my deal, I signed to Polo to Don too. Mm. Polo to Don was in my situation. Somehow along the way, the, pe- the people who I was signed to, they didn't get along. Whatever the fuck happened, it fucked up the whole trajectory of what we had going on. My first week signed to him, bro. I had a Chris Brown record. Whew. Crazy, crazy. Oh, it's done. It was done, yeah. I, we just never gonna hear. I don't know where the fuck the record is now. But we, I did a record with him. 
I got I had an Akon record. We had um another joint. I had some I had like bro, the, the magnitude of these songs, bro. Unreal. Not like don't you can't even fathom the type of record that it actually was. Trust me, because I couldn't fathom it. Like it's like Chris Brown or Roscoe. That would have been bro. crazy. That would have been hard. Nuts. Cause what year? What what era of Chris Brown was that? That was that was a uh, I can transform you right or uh, that exclusive been right after Deuces and shit. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that would have been nuts. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, they, they, it never. Came, so you don't even know Polo what that shit is that at shit. today. I'm putting the pressure on Polo. Polo got that shit somewhere. <laughs> that was the first, that was one of the first hey, records you put it out. on YouTube. I just want to hear what this <laughs> shit sound like. On YouTube. I got to hear that shit. It's crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie. And Akon is crazy too. Like, what? What is the the like bureaucracy behind like those songs ever reaching the light of day? I think it's all on who has the record. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I don't know why Polo wouldn't put some shit like that out, or what would make him not put it out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But for whatever reason, that shit's sitting on a hard drive somewhere. I hate that shit. I got some records from, um, I got a record that I actually wrote, bro, that I've been trying to get to, like, I did it a while ago when uh, Kanye and John Legend was doing their little duo thing mm -hmm. yeah. called Higher Power. It was on a sample of The Lion King. Oh, my God. Mm. Next level, bro. Hold on. I'll mm. play it for you later. Them two was supposed to be on there? Mm -hmm. Nigga. Shit, just, sometimes, sometimes that shit just be, <laughs> sometimes it just be like that, bro. I done had records that I did with, like, Stargate in them, and that shit ended up being a Tanache record. Or like the does that piss you that off? I got with Travis Scott that came from that type of session too. Does that shit like piss you off? Like a no, song that was sometimes. like you know was gonna be a hit, but they was like we gonna get this to them. I mean, it ain't never happened that blatantly before. Yeah. So to me, I wasn't mad because it just put me in another element that I hadn't been in before. So to me, for Tanache, right after two on, yeah, yeah she was like. On top of West Coast, when I was out there, that's all I heard was her, and then she had the Schoolboy Q feature, and all she was had some motion mm. going. So yeah. this is before the cadences and the lyricas, and the, you know what I mean, like even before Ty and them. This is like way back. So Damn. to me, it was like, all right, cool. So sh since they gave that record, you still get oh, a yeah, check off. Sure. Okay, they okay. usually this. It's usually like a deal on the back end. Or some okay, shit. it could okay. be some money. It could be some money and some percent. It could just be percent. It just depends. Damn. That's crazy. Music shit is crazy. So would you say this industry is really as cutthroat as everybody makes it out to seem? Oh, 100 percent worse. Worse? Fucking right. Worse. 100 percent Whew. Absolutely. What's the worst shit you've ever seen? Oh, that's happened to you. I signed a fucking terrible situation with some. Yeah, caught a 360. People. I don't just I like <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even a 360 necessarily. Like I had somebody, this is what my issue is. This I'm I guess we might as well just talk about this shit too. Like, my issue was I was signing somebody who likes to vocalize that they were in my situation a lot. And they ended up selling my contract to somebody else like without me knowing about it, literally. <laughs> so I'm like, like literally I'm coming, I'm like, oh, yo, I want to go shoot this video for this project, this song heating up. And they're like, oh, yeah, we don't do that no more. We actually sold uh, your contract to such and such. They managing you down. <laughs> and you just got to walk out the building. Like, I mean, I'm still in the building, but they just sold the stock. Like, they're not in my shit no more, basically. Like, we just, we sold you. Like, I'm like, sold this contract. What do you mean? Like, damn, so this shit sound like modern day slavery. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me, brother. Hey, yo. Hey. Shit, wicked, man. Damn. That took me. I want to say 11 to 12 years to get out of that shit. Damn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. 12 years? They get, then went and got deals, all kind of shit, like, without you knowing. And shit like that. Shit be crazy as fuck, man. Shit is crazy. They, they'll, they'll, like, get deals on top of your contract? Yeah, or, like, use that to that. So the, it, the most important thing you can have in a deal, to me, outside of your master's, is your admin rights. Your admin yeah. rights give you the leverage or the power of attorney, if you will, to go and enter into a situation on somebody's behalf. Yeah. So once you sign that away, and that don't always be in the language that's clear cut, sometimes it be in that. Fine, fine print. Fine print. You feel what I'm saying? So for an eighteen year old kid that's signing his first record deal when he had that house by by himself and his mama somewhere else working the, you know what I mean? Like that shit is you looking at the bread and the situation and the opportunity of your talent and shit like that. Yeah. You're not looking at ooh, ooh, so Yeah. What's the most egregious spending you've ever done of money? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh man. Uh Shit. I think when I first got my no hands check, my first one, 
which was probably like the first one that came to the mailbox that I literally opened and seen myself was probably like I want to say it was seventy eight thousand dollars. Yeah, and that came from like three months of like uh, your sales or whatever yeah. the fuck. Yeah, damn. Uh, I had some other shit going on too, so I think I went and bought my mom a car. I bought myself a car and shit. I bought like just I went crazy for a minute. But other than that, I've, I've been pretty, I've been pretty under control with the spending shit. Yeah, that's what's that's up. That's good though. though. But it's because I got kids. Like if I ain't had them, you probably wouldn't have this. He would have been buying big shit. ass chains like T Pain. Yeah, I'd be wilding out. <laughs> have an island or some shit. I'd be cutting up. So do they still? So like, do you get paid? I've always wanted to ask this. Anytime a song is played like an arena or something like that, you get a check from that. It depends. But well, there's a check that's cut out to me. Now, if I get it or not, is a different is a different story. What? Yeah, the, from what I just told you. Like sometimes motherfuckers will have like most of the time in a situation, even when you successfully complete a deal, very seldom do you recoup all of your shit that you did the deal with immediately. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So like it might take some years for you to recoup whatever the fuck they said they need to recoup before you can actually get what you're supposed to get off that shit. So I get money off the songs being played, yeah. but it might be. Thirty percent of the seventy percent I'm supposed to get. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, shit like that. Damn. Thirty percent of the seventy percent. Mm -hmm. That's, that's before taxes. <laughs> Thank God I got a few records. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I know. Gotta, that, yeah. That's why. It, yeah. That's why I say it's like WWE because now in the digital realm you can fabricate a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But a lot of the fabrication isn't in the numbers. It's in the what you see. You motherfuckers doing and shit. That'd be the same. Woo -woo -woo that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Damn. So do you think if you were to let's erase everything that you did, right? Let's say you coming out, you drop your first song in 2024. Do you think you would do better now with sales and everything in 2024? Or do you think you'd still be better? I definitely off think I have the traction for sure now. As far as the sales per se, when it comes to like the machine itself and like the fab like how does shit work and shit like that, yeah. like it's hard to say if it be better or worse because there might be somebody else who's trying a little harder. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, but I definitely think the traction would be there for sure. I think that, I think that, let's put it like this. I think that my biggest mistake that kept me from getting and keeping and maintaining that notoriety and that that steamroll that I had going was mm -hmm. me making the decision to say, again, it always comes back to self. Me making the decision to say, I ain't doing hooks for niggas no more. Fuck y'all. Yeah. That, shit. that tweet right there, that's what did that shit. Because to me, I really, I really followed through with that shit. Like I yeah. was like, I ain't, I don't care. Y'all ain't coming to me for this. I ain't doing it. Do you regret it? A little bit, but at the same time, I appreciate it. More. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I think getting a second opportunity with somebody or with a situation um, could not go the way that it should go mm -hmm. if you don't go through the shit you need to go through in between. Like, I could get the second opportunity and still be an asshole. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and fuck it up again. So, and then they're like, uh, you know what? For Even for the people who vouched for you to get that second opinion, now you just lost 10 people instead of that one. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Type shit. That's crazy. Man. So, what, like, before we head up out of here, what is, like, the biggest piece of advice you would give to artists coming up? And Do this? all that shit. Do everything. And I say that because you're the brand, right? Like the brand makes the music, the artist or whoever makes the music. But mm -hmm. to me, I feel like doing more instead of just focusing on one thing, try to be great at a lot of different things. Even if you fail, sometimes the fail can be your biggest moment. Yeah. How you failed or whatever the fuck the case may be. Maybe it may get you that notoriety that being successful didn't get you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you learn from it. So guess what? Now I'm gonna come back and try this shit again and I'm actually gonna succeed in front of the same people face who came and clicked a thousand times to watch me fail. Yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So like. I feel like, I feel like, you have to shoot your you have to shoot your shot. Yeah, yeah. Right now I'm doing, um, songwriting still. I'm doing my archery shit. I just dropped two new records in the last like, few months and shit like that. I got the videos coming out for those. I just completed my third independent film, uh, in a year. I ain't Damn, even, you I ain't need some actors? Enough. Yeah, like, yeah, we do actually. I got y'all. Nah, show. I'm dead ass. Hey, we no, in there? Serious? No, for sure. I got you. I got the plush. Shout out to King June. June doing this thing. He's shooting. Uh, he shot 20, he's, he's aiming to shoot about 25 films between the beginning of last year and the end of this year. So, and we did extra like 12 or 12 or 15. I can definitely get y'all in for sure. And yeah. I didn't do, I didn't have no acting experience before I did this. I'm on my third film. So, um, just spreading it out and doing all kinds of things, doing the flag football stuff. That's all wellness and health shit. Like, mm -hmm. just expanding the brand, not just focusing on 
they tried to make me the hook guy, bro. They tried to say uh, I drove Lyft. <laughs> you know what I'm fucking, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like, you gotta do it all, bro. The hook guy. The hook guy. <laughs> For but, sure. No, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. This I'll is what I have How much ghostwriting goes on in the industry? <laughs> Most of it is that. Most of it. And in and, and, and people's defense, not everybody has a ghostwriter. Some yeah. people that are doing the records like I was yeah. are the ghostwriters too. Yeah. So like Lotto, I'm gonna give Lotto a shout because I fuck with her. I fuck with I, I fuck with her artistry. All the rest of the stuff I I can't say. You know what I mean? But to me, for her to be writing for other artists and still having her own motion at the same time it is an a perfect yeah. example of that. Yeah. yeah. And being a woman doing that shit is fine. So yeah. Koi too, all of them that's doing shit like shout that. Out Koi Koi, I fuck with her. I wrote. I'll be writing them. I'll be. T- Hey, check your DM, bro, because I probably didn't, not to, but I didn't snitch uh, y'all a nice Ray little Roscoe message. song would be crazy. Just, just because I really, I'm be telling crazy. you, bro, I, t- I typed, I uh, DM'd her like a, f- maybe like a few months ago or some shit like that, just to give her her flowers and shit like that, being a woman in the industry and even coming into her sexuality now, like her, her grown woman phase and yeah. shit like that, like growing up in front of us and not being afraid to just be your pure self. When yeah. she wasn't doing the sexy shit and now that she's transitioning into that because that's what she chooses to do. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? I think that's tight. And having your music reflect that and grow on, it's almost like the butterfly effect. In a yeah. Sense. That's hard. Oh my God. That would be hard. That would be one of the ones. Mm-hmm. Cor- oh, Roscoe and Koi song? Five. You know, let's make it happen. Let's see if we can get this to happen. No, Koi, sure. pull up. You know what's crazy? We'll talk about it off camera. We'll mm-hmm. talk about it off camera. We'll talk about it off camera. You got anything else? What can we expect from Mr. ROSCOE in 2024? More wins, man. We bring a fun back. That's really what I want to do, bro. In every aspect. So with the film shit, I want to get back to how it was when you saw motherfuckers in Belly and all about the Benjamins and all kind of shit like that. Like the people who you're listening to that are embedded in the culture, I want to start doing fun shit. It don't always got to be serious movies or nothing like that. It could be short content, whatever the fuck, but yeah. I just want to collaborate and I want to keep expanding the brand. I want to bring fun back to music yeah. and I want to keep pushing the needle and raising the bar. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. Well, you know we going to support. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Y'all got mine support. too, man. I'm a, I reciprocate. You know that. So. For sure. Appreciate for sure. it, yeah. Bro, I just want to say thank you so much for pulling up on, letting us pull up on no, you sure. and anytime, running man. this, bro. Anytime, like, anytime. This, this was one of them ones. This is one of the ones we probably long won. overdue too. It took us a minute. It so took I a minute. Yeah, it yeah. took a minute. Not for sure. It took a minute. Not for sure. But damn, we went. This might be two hours. You it's said like one one forty five. One thirty. One forty five. That's cool. That's good. Yeah. Hey, that's I'm glad I gave it to y'all, bro, because I, I've been holding. I've been like, man, I got so many. I got so many like, and this ain't even all of them. But we did yeah. a. Oh, we gonna spin back. We gonna spin back. We gonna spin back. I feel like this could be a springboard into because a lot of people they tend to forget, and the media coming up, they don't. They only care what's hot right now. They don't want to go back. Yeah. And fun. I feel like this, especially with all the stuff you're putting together now, like could be a springboard into. Hey, we need to go get a Roscoe interview. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then nah, that for springboard. Sure. And they be on it, bro. Like I, just be, I don't be wanting to up. do it. I be because to, to me, bro, it's if if the intentions aren't good or if it's not going to be utilized the right way. Like I know that it's genuine with you. Yeah. I know you genuinely follow and support what I got going on, as I do for y'all too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So why not do that type of shit? Yeah. Which, yeah. That's, that's supporting one another's platforms. Right. Whereas somebody else might be taking that shit to use it for whatever, whatever, and turn yeah. it into Just to get a clip. Shit. I gave y'all a lot of shit today. They could take that shit and make it whatever, whatever they want. Whatever they want, yeah. Yeah. But nah, bro. Thank you so much for nah, this for opportunity. Sure. We Anytime, appreciate bro, it. Sure. And we gonna definitely. We got a lot in the works this year, man. Yeah, and we would love to have you a part of the thing no, that we, sure. we were trying to build up on this for side, sure. bro. Because this this genius right here, listen, we're we going to chop it when the camera yeah, goes. Yeah, put sure. it together. Let's do but it. tell everybody where they can find you before we head up out of here. Man, I'm everywhere, first of all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but my Instagram is urdjuice, uh, at Roscoe Dash on Twitter. Uh, if you're on Facebook, that's Roscoe Dash. Most importantly, my YouTube is Roscoe Dash online. I'm dropping... Different stuff in different places. My TikTok is uh, Roscoe Dash TT. I'm trying to get all this shit back to Roscoe. Whoever can help me, bro, get this shit together so we can find one click. Yeah. Get all that shit. But I'm out here, man, for sure. And we're keeping it live. We're keeping this shit coming. We're pushing the needle all 2024 and beyond. So remember, I'm Mr. Futuristic for a reason. So. Hey, listen, <laughs> W Podcast, appreciate you letting us pull up for all sure. that great stuff. Bro. Very fire episode. Very fire episode. Yeah. Fuego. Hey. Till next time. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. And until next time, we'll see y'all. And tell your aunties that uh, me and Roscoe pulling up. Pulling up, man. Have a plate. <laughs> Have a plate and we scrape. <laughs>
Glock? Yeah. I fuck with Glock. Y'all gonna say when you're talking about the 